Anwar and Anwar are here. Hi, happy Friday. All right, today we're doing something special. We do, we're concentrating on uh, the misunderstood masterpiece of Andalusia, uh, Sherry. I'm really excited. I love Sherry. I ask for Sherry every year on my birthday. So when you told me we were going to do Sherry tasting, I was like, no way. So that sounds good. Yeah. Cool. So do you want to start us off and tell us specifically about this wine that we're going to have today? It's a uh, Equipo Novados, correct? Equipo Novados, yeah. So, uh, maybe I'll go or first or kind of over the o overview uh, and, and then we'll jump into the wine. You know, we got, we got kind of everything set up. We got flamenco music in the background, I think. Okay, cool. Yeah. The mood set. The All maps. Right. The more maps, important. yes. Yeah. So let's start out with the maps. All right. As you guys can see, this is outline uh, outline of Spain and uh, oops, the orange part that's Andalusia, uh, southern Spain, uh, right uh, uh, you know over the uh, body of water next to Morocco. So it's you know the the most uh, southern part of uh, uh, Spain. Uh, and um, here is the internal. You guys. This is a very fun map. <laughs> yeah, this is a, the map of the uh, Sherry country. So you, you see a, a triangle is formed. So uh, it's uh, between the cities of uh, San Lucar de Barameda, El Toreto, and uh, uh, Jerez, which is uh, where the name Sherry comes from. And, and Sherry could only come from that uh, triangle of cities. That's the only place that, that makes Sherry, uh, you know, obviously in the world. Um, so uh, Sherry is uh, in the south, very close to the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, and also close to uh, Guadalavir River. So, yes. yeah. Yeah, Guadalavir River, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, there are f five types of sherries. There's uh, Fino, Amontillado, Palo Cortado, Oloroso, and the sweet sherries. Uh, there's a variation of sweet sherries. There's Pedro Jimenez, cream sherries, uh, Moscatel, but they're kind of grouped uh, together as sweet sherries. Uh, so we're going to be talking about uh, Fino sherry. And, and I, th I think it'd be nice if you kind of give us like the whole, uh, read the whole uh, name of the wine, I guess. So the name of the wine so is by Equipo Novados, is the producer, and the name of the wine is Mandelia and Rama, is the name of the wine. These are important descriptors that tell you what the wine is. Yes. So, you, so manzanilla, that's a type of fino sherry, right? Yes. So, uh, uh, as I was saying, so fino is the lightest, the driest type of sherry. Uh, and uh, manzanilla, it's a fino sherry that can only be produced in the town of um, San, San Lucar de Barameda. So, any finos that come from that uh, town are called manzanillas. Uh, so, it's, uh, so when you hear a fino, manzanilla just means that it came from, from that town. Um, so yeah, it's uh, um, uh, all the um, dry sherries are based on a high acid uh, uh, grape called Palomino. Mm -hmm. And it comes from uh, uh, the special white chalk uh, 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 soil called uh, Albariza. And uh, it's actually very interesting because uh, Another famous aperitif uh, wine comes from a similar chalk salt and a champagne. Right. So, so, yeah. it's, 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 which is also similar in the sense that champagne only comes from Spain, right? Because it's a lot of yeah. bar-driven. Yes. Yeah. And, and and another th thing that there's uh, there's similarities is because as we, we're going to jump into the Solera system, is a lot of cherries are non-vintage cherries because uh, they combine different. Uh, 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 Grapes from different years, mm -hmm. and they kind of put them in the Solera system where a lot of grapes are blended together. And non vintage champagnes are made in a similar way. So, you know, there's a lot of similarities between sherry and champagne. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about the Solera system a little bit later and how to find grape similarities in wine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we, we, we could uh, uh, jump into kind of the, the Solera system. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, um, first, uh, uh, when the, the wines are uh, picked, they're uh, fermented with like local yeast uh, uh, from the area. Um, then they're fortified uh, uh, from uh, typically like 12% to 15%. So they don't turn to vinegar. Right. Uh, and there they enter the Solera system. Uh, so uh, uh, Solera system, there is uh, 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 a part of it is uh, they have three barrels 
on top of each other. And that's called criadera. And, and they're partially filled. And, and the process is uh, the most bottom barrel has the older uh, 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 wines. The medium uh, barrel has like you know, younger wines and the top barrel has the youngest wines. Mm -hmm. So, you know, new crop comes in, it goes to the top barrel. So what happens is when they're ready to bottle a particular uh, wine, they uh, uh, bottle it from the bottom barrel mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it empties out. So they have to take the wine from the second barrel and put it in the first barrel and then the, the wine from the first barrel into the second barrel. And then they top off the top barrel with, uh, with the new wine. Okay. And because uh, uh, sherry is so distinctive, mm -hmm. uh, an Atlantic influence has a, a, a big uh, uh, play in that. A specific a layer uh, of yeast called, called flour, yeah. F O L R, forms on top of the uh, the top uh, portion of criadera, and it looks like a soggy white bread. Yeah, it looks and kind it, of funky. Yes, and it protects the, the wine from oxidation, right. so it, it keeps this kind of fresh uh, saline flavor. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so. And that's important because when we talk about the different types of sherry, when something happens to the flour, and that's yeah, and then we'll kind of recap the other sherries because yeah. today we're concentrating on, uh, yeah, on the Manzanilla slash Pinot. Um, and and uh, uh, typically uh, uh, these uh, uh, dry sherries, uh, uh, they're in the system for like minimum two years. Mm -hmm. But this particular uh, sherry from uh, Equipo Navazos, uh, Equipo Navazos, is uh, four, uh, four and a half years, yeah. which is much longer than a typical sherry produced process. And I think they're required to be. Yeah, yeah, that's the requirement. Yes, so, yeah. but so they go over the requirement, and I think that's you know part of the. Uh, so you know, you know, like let's open it up and kind of jump into tasting it, and then we'll we'll, we'll start talking more about the, you know the wines. Sure. So this is, and also, and Rama. I don't want want to jump ahead, but Jeffrey, you talked about yeah. when we're showing off the wine, what that means, what that impacts the way. It looks visually. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Uh, I think you can kind of see that it's a bit cloudy. It's yes. not like a clear wine. Yes. Um, so. And it's very uh, like lightish amber. It's not light. It's uh, uh it's uh, kind of a little darker. Uh, uh, yeah. It's got some caramel tone to it. Yes. So you can kind of tell right away that this isn't, you know, a wet wine. Yes. Um, it's different. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful sale and like, oh, I don't know, I want to say overwhelming, but very distinctive saline profile on the nose. Wow. I love sherry. Yes. So. I think it's very underappreciated, and everyone keeps thinking, "Oh, well, sherry belongs in my grandmother's cabinet." Yeah. But it's, I mean, you're missing out if you haven't had sherry. So it's really good. It's um, it's got like this very light kind of caramel almondy note to it, which yes. is very just. I think sherry has those um, flavor profiles, but this particular, I think, like manzanillo and fe and uh, fino, it's like brine, iodine. Mm -hmm. There's some saline in there. It's some kind of like light kind of herbal kind of element to it. So very saline. Yeah, very saline. And the typical dry sherry you know, profile, although this is very uh, refreshing and, and uh, extremely pleasant. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, let's go back. I think maybe to the to the wine to see. So obviously we have uh, the vasos, and then it says Enrama. So Enrama it means. Uh, um, uh, it's uh, uh, frequently sherry. Uh, it's uh, filtered a lot, so it's not uh, um, murky like this wine uh, kind of looks like. It, it, it looks a little murky, uh, um, but um, uh, uh, the idea for Enrama is to preserve the cask flavor. So they want uh, uh, the bottle to taste as uh, as close to the the way the wine tastes in the cask as possible. That's why it's very lightly filtered. Mm -hmm. And also the wine has kind of this dark hue and it has these like particles in it. Yeah, it's more yeah. intense. So the more filtered it is, the more dark the color it is. So I was looking at food pairing for Manzanilla and there was one pairing, food pairing just for Andrama yes. styles. Because yes. it's more intense for theirs. So. Well, we'll talk about that later. 
Yeah. If you have a question. Uh, okay. Yeah. What's the fast drinking temperature? Yeah. That's a that's a great question, Brent. So um, chilled, right? Chilled and uh, actually on, on Equipment Nevada's website for this exact one, they recommend uh, somewhere between nine and eleven degrees Celsius. Wow, they're very specific. Right. So, which yeah. I, I don't know if that ever. Uh, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Uh, and, and their website is actually excellent. They go into such details about every single wine they have. And we'll cover that a little bit later. Some of the other wines that they have. Yeah. Okay, so this is nine and eleven. And you know, there's a little backstory uh, to this wine. Uh, probably if you could show the picture one more time and show the actually the drawing. Yeah, I actually I thought that was super cool. We had this, yeah, for breakfast. So I think it's very worthwhile. You never know which way to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. There we go. Okay. So it, it looks kind of like an abstract tree. Yes. Um, so what is that? Uh, so uh, 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 it's a tribute to uh, Charles Darwin. So it, it's um, uh, in 1837, it was his uh, sketch uh, uh, to the Tree of Life. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, and that was um, it's from a famous passage in his Origin of Species, which we talked about before. So I'm looking at the book and I think he's talking about that Tree of Life, and he has that little sketch in there. So that's an homage to Darwin. Yes. It was very cool. And uh, so, so these guys, you know, these are kind of their. "Quote unquote entry level wines, even though these wines are, are pretty complex wines, but then they have uh, these uh, labotas, as they call them, where they uh, it's like a very fascinating process. So they look at different um, solera systems from different famous producers within the region. Well, you know, relatively there's no famous producers right now because you know, hardly anybody drinks uh, uh, um, sherry, but." Uh, Producers that are greater their art, and they pick uh, sometimes individual uh, uh, barrels, mm -hmm. and they number them. So uh, uh, we have uh, one of their more complex manzanillas. Uh, from our private collection. From the first couple of ones. So uh, that's a, a manzanilla that came from a particular uh, cask uh, from uh, Fernando de Casilla, I think, which is another famous uh, sherry producer. So they liked, they tasted, they liked that particular cask. So they bottled it uh, under the, uh, their La Bota. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, uh, uh, that's also Manzanilla. And it was aged from six to seven years. So it, it had even like longer aging process. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it's it, delicate, extremely co uh, complex wine. Um, and uh, there's even, uh, there's an origin to that story too, which is actually, uh, is like a fascinating uh, inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, the very first La Bota number one uh, uh, was uh, inspired by Edgar Allan Poe's The Cask of Amontillado. It's a short story, it's a short story yeah. called The Cask of Amontillado, which is like a, just a spectacular, you know, like uh, inspiration. Uh, so, so the story, uh, I never read the story, but apparently it's about like revenge. Uh, okay. uh, but, but it's just uh, such, a, such a great so one. If you're planning revenge, you should definitely. Well, you know, Montilado, share, which, yeah, which we could, I guess, uh, jump into right now. Yeah, well, actually, so real quick, before we yes, move on yes, to the different types yes. of ceremony, I think we should talk about the different types of ceremony. Because there's many different types of ceremony that are part of the Equipment Nevada Wine Festival. Yes. Um, and so we have Parker gave it 62.5 out of 20. So it's yeah. a very high score. Robert Parker gave it 92 points for 14.99. This is Spectacular example of sherry, yeah. um, excellent entry level if you're wanting to try a dry sherry. I mean, it's aged for so many years, it's complex. Um, you just know if you don't try sherry thing. So for pairing, because this is Enrama, which is yeah. the more intense style, yes. um, I want to say that we should go with a rose negro, um, definitely fried seafood, more flavorful um, kind of stuff. And then, um, you know, kind of interesting, they do say that it pairs well with sushi. So this is. And it's hard to find pairings with sushi that aren't sake, so I think this is a great option as well. Oh, well, so, so you know, I, I would add kind of two, two steps. So I think the classic pairing, uh, especially with rice cakes, are uh, Mercola uh, uh, almonds yeah. and yeah. almonds. Yes. You know, you know, traditional. Uh, that is traditional, uh, yeah. Yeah. Appetizers in, in, in southern Spain. Uh, another anecdote, um, uh, we had a gentleman stop by uh, the wine store, and he works in the restaurant business. 
immediately uh, he went to Sherry's. Mm -hmm. So we had a like, discussion, you know, because I'm surprised. That's not, you know, uh, the one drink that everybody goes for. <laughs> yeah. uh, he, uh, his uh, statement was, oh, it's so light, refreshing, and it pairs so well with food. That's, yeah, that's why I didn't say olives and nuts, because everybody kind of yeah. thinks olives and nuts. It's like, you have to kind of extend your eyes. It's a very versatile pairing option. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of is a theme for our last few yeah. tastings with this one. So just kind of yeah. Okay, well now um, let's go ahead and talk about the different types of sherry. Yes. Um, because I I do like manzanilla sherry, but my favorite is actually oloroso. But yeah. why don't you walk us through? So there's um yeah. there's different types. Like amontillado is one type of sherry, right? Yeah. So uh, uh manzanilla that's uh, typically the uh, refreshing. Uh, uh, very saline uh, uh, sherry, yeah, yeah, which is what we're tasting uh, right now. It kind of uh, pairs well with uh, raw seafood, mm -hmm. and it's actually very delicate. It, it's a it's a it's a wine that should be drunk within a couple of days. You know, keep, keep it in the refrigerator mm -hmm. because it loses its uh, freshness, uh, yeah. like typically like a white wine once you open it. The second uh, uh, wine is Amontillado uh, 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 from Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, so uh, that's a uh, interesting process. So um, uh, we were talking about floor, uh, 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 the covering that, that uh, prevents sherry from oxidizing. Well, sometimes that floor breaks and oxygen seeps in. So uh, uh, the sherry becomes a little darker and it becomes more nuttier. It, it kind of loses its salinity and uh, um, it, it has like maybe a more sauteed mushrooms, umami is like a typical flavor. Uh, flavor. So it, it, it kind of becomes more rounder, more amber in color, and, and the flavor uh, profile changes. Uh, then Oloroso. Oloroso is, uh, it's oxidized from the beginning. So the, uh, 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 the floor, uh, they want uh, uh, the wine to, to have uh, contact with oxygen. So uh, it typically is higher in alcohol. It goes to me, uh, from uh, phenols are around 15. Uh, Oloroso jumps to 18. Uh, it, it comes kind of semi-sweet, uh, yeah. typically. Yeah. And then you could leave the bottle open. They have a, a long aging period. Because it was already oxidized by the style of the wine. Right. So uh, it, it ages so longer. Then there's like a, um, a delicate uh, uh, style called Palo Cortado. So uh, uh, it starts like under floor just like sherry, but then uh, this is, uh, uh, something mysterious happened. Okay. And I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't read uh, up uh, what, it, what it means, but it becomes kind of uh, uh, richer and more regal. So, so it becomes similar to Oloroso, mm -hmm. but like I said, Oloroso uh, uh, starts out uh, with the concept that he's gonna be oxidized, while as Apollo Cardano does not. Okay. And it just kind of like veers in that direction. So there, uh, uh, the least uh, found I've never styles, had a yes, myself, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And then finally, there's like a group of sweet cherries, uh, Pedro Jimenez, cream cherries, or Moscatel. Uh, probably uh, Pedro Jimenez are typically the most complex of the uh, uh, cherries, and uh, it comes from different grapes. Uh, whereas uh, the previous ones we discussed it came from the Palomino Fino grape. Mm -hmm. uh, Pedro Jimenez is actually the name of the grape. Uh, they uh, uh, dry it in the sun until it shrivels because kind like of reasons. Reasons. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then uh, you know it's also fortified wine, and it's very uh, it has a very high viscosity. Yes, it's Typ very syrupy, very viscous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Typically, you would uh, you could even pour it on top of uh, ice cream uh, or just have it by itself because it's. Uh, yeah. So, but, but you know, it's it's like very thick. Yes. Yeah. So. And it is sweet, but but it's it, you know it, it, when it's done well, it's a, it's a beautiful dessert wine. Yeah, it's very complex, very yeah. interesting. That's what you need to know about. Yeah, yeah. All right, great. And then those all those cherries they have different pairings, right? Yeah. So amontillado is good with like uh, almonds and dried fruit, and then oloroso, um, you know, with roasted meats and like finer cheeses. Palo cortado, apparently, it's so unique you should be sipping it straight. Um, and then cream cherry, you can have it uh, over ice cream or you know, with dessert. Yeah. So, and, and you know, this is just a brief overview. This is a fascinating drink, uh, and uh, uh, you know, it's just interesting. We were comparing it to champagne earlier, uh, where you know, champagne is it's a drink that everybody knows and loves. Mm -hmm. This drink, you can't find its niche, not yet, even though it's a you know spectacular drink, uh, uh, looking for a crowd. Yes. Yeah. No, I love sherry. Sherry is a revelation. I always. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah just the last note, uh, what Jess is, uh, wrote about this particular wine. Yeah. Uh, 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 she said, it really is intellectual. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, on that note, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, have a great weekend and we'll talk to you next week. Thank Bye. you.